Emergency crews are racing to evacuate tens of thousands of people. Puerto Rico is already struggling with no electricity in the wake of the hurricane. And there it is, no power anywhere. Our diesel is very quickly running out. What are we talking, weeks without power or months? I think we're going to be talking about months. Well, President Trump has declared Puerto Rico a disaster zone. Puerto Rico was absolutely obliterated. Electrical grid is destroyed. It wasn't in good shape to start off with. Tell me what the last 24 hours have been like. Hell, this has just been horrible. Horrible. By now, I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of the giant mess that is Puerto Rico. If you're like me, you've been scratching your head trying to figure out how do you help? How does anyone help, right? Short of like donating money to the Red Cross or people that are actually on the floor in the island, there's not much else that you can do. But at the same time, I realize that this is unprecedented. Never before have Americans in America be up against a situation where they're not going to have power anywhere from six months to three years. Every day I hear from viewers that say they can't keep their food cold, they don't have lights at night, and I come to realize that I do have some to offer. There is a way I can help, and that's why today I'm going to show you how to make a DIY solar generator. First, let's talk about what a solar generator is. Typically, it's a box containing batteries, an inverter, a solar charge controller, and all kinds of different connectors to get the power in and out of the battery box. It's essentially a small, lightweight, portable power wall, just like the ones we've been building for our homes. According to the internet, these are the 11 most popular solar generators. We can break them down into three groups. There are the big ones that are around one kilowatt hour worth of energy that sell for about $1,500 on the average. Then the ones that are too small to be useful. But then in the middle, there are those that are around half a kilowatt hour and they average around $550. And that's what our target is going to be for this project. So what do we need? Well, first we need a box. We need batteries. I've included a full list of materials down in the description. First, let's look at the batteries. I tried several different types, but after much experimentation, I decided these are the best for this project. They are small, lightweight, affordable, and they already have a BMS built into each individual cell. You will need 160 of them. Start by making packs of 10 using the Captain tape. Make sure all face the same direction so the terminals line up. Next, group four of these packs together, making a 40 cell group. Ignoring the center pad, put a dot of solder into each of the outer cell pads. Then solder a resistor to each pad. The value does not matter as we are only going to use the legs of the resistor and not the resistor itself. Next, slide a brass rod under the resistor legs and solder. Do both sides and repeat making four of these cell groups. Next, wrap all four groups together and connect like shown in this picture. The last step is to solder the interconnects between the cells. You've essentially made a 4S 40P battery pack. Notice the small cables on these batteries. These are balanced leads. You will need to balance charge your battery at least once using any RC charger like the one I'm using here. After that, let's move on to all the other components. Here is the final product. Notice the placement of all the components. The battery meter and the 12 volt socket and USB sockets are both in the middle section. On the left side channel, you have two nutrient connectors. The gray one is to connect the solar panel. And the blue one is to connect an additional external battery pack, which I will show you how to make in a future video. On the right channel, there's the power button at the very bottom and then three high voltage AC plugs. Notice the orientation allowing for at least one of those big bulky blocky wall warts that come with laptops or other devices. Here are all the dimensions of all the holes you will have to cut out.
take the inverter apart. You won't need the case. You will mount this directly on the lid of this 1200 Pelican case. Most of the components are attached to the lid of this case with the exception of the battery itself and the solar charge controller. Right about this time is when you will have to wire everything. Take a look at the schematic I've drawn for you here. All right, it's all wired in. Things to note here are, I have to cut the spade connectors right here just for clearance. Uh, the DC to DC has to be elevated using the one inch uh, standoffs. And the fence cable has to be spliced and extended to be able to reach all the way where I installed it. I just used double sided tape to install that in there. The relay also double sided tape. On the Nutri connectors, I didn't use spade connectors. I just soldered right into the terminals. All right, now it's time to install the battery. I would put it upside down. In my unit, I can get away without securing the battery because everything's so tight. This is essentially touching this. And when these cables are lying here, they're touching this. So it pushes the battery. They don't wobble around. Solar charge controller is going to go in here. You will have to make a wide cable for the uh, XT60 connectors. Connect the battery on one side. Connect the solar charger on the other. And then this one is the one that goes to all the components here. Once you put everything in here, make sure that everything fits. Finally, the last thing is to program this little meter. To start, you press the OK button. Use the up arrow to go all the way to OVP. Hold the OK button for three seconds. The first value you set it at 16.8. Eight. Second value, you set it at 350 watts. Third value, you set it at 40 amps. The OFT value, you leave it at zero. OAH, you set it at 32 amps. LOP value, you set it at 12 volts. Then you go down one value and then you click it and then that'll reset this battery. Now this will only work if the battery is fully charged at 16 volts. If it's not, then it's not gonna be accurate. So do this last step when the battery is fully charged. And then to turn it on, all of these have to be gray. Put the yellow cursor on the out, press OK. And there you go, it should be on. So here it is. How did we do? Well, 500 watt hours worth of uh, battery storage, uh, 300 watts max, right? Pure sine wave, it's got a 12 volt uh, out, which is more like 16 volts because it's a 4S lithium battery, right? And then uh, USBs, high quality nutrient connectors in and out to add this one to add an extra battery in here, which we can put in another uh, identical case. And then this way, it'll be above one kilowatt hours worth of battery. And this one is to attach a solar panel. Let's do that now. God. On the cable end, you will have to obviously do the uh, Nutrient connector. And on the other side, you will need the solar connectors. Here's the cool thing about the Nutrient connectors. You can't plug it into the wrong one. It only goes in on the right one. All right, 16.4 volts, 2.5 amps going into the battery there. Because this is a 16 volt battery, so you'll have to use solar panels that are 16 volts or more. Usually they come at 18 or 24 or 32, 36 volts, but definitely the 12 volt solar panels will not work. Here's a few examples that will work. So, how much is this thing gonna cost you in parts? Looking at the list, it looks like it comes in around $550 which is about the same as buying a system that's already made, right? Except for one thing. The $550 includes the price of the solar panel, the extension cable for the solar panel, and about six of these light bulbs with their little cable so you can connect them. This is a complete system ready to deploy in Puerto Rico to light up a home and to give at least power communications or medical devices. But the big question is, how many people in Puerto Rico can afford $550 to buy all the parts and have the know-how to do all this. Some, but not all. So, if you're watching this, if you want to help, you could order all the parts, do all the work, put this thing together, and then ship it to someone in the island. But who? Well, I have a contact in the island. Meet Javier Camacho. Hola a todos. Yo soy Javier y soy de Puerto Rico. 
I'm making this video to try to reach out to anyone that can actually help us power back on the island. Only 30% of the island has electricity. The expectation is that they're going to have 95% of the generation by the 15th of December. If you go down the streets outside the big city, you see there's a bunch of cables in the floor. And when you hear the media saying, oh, we're gonna have everything fixed by December, you'd be like, mm, that's never gonna happen. I know how to make my own stuff. I want to help people, trying to make something, install small setups that will allow them to power on their houses, at least to, to, to make a decent meal, probably charge a cell phone, probably turn on some lights, and if they have a medical device, at least power them up for four hours or three hours. I know people, we can make them, we know how to solder, I have 3D printers that I can make some parts. I was fortunate enough to have the power back on on my house two nights ago. But don't trust this, it's gonna go away. Power could be back on for one day, two days, and it's gonna be out for one week. We are at the mercy of the people that could actually put the grid on, or we could help them. We can make something. I know a lot of people that could actually make small to mid sized power wall. We just need help with the knowledge or equipment if it's possible and we can make a difference i'm here for you guys whatever you need from me just let me know i'm already making calls you could also just buy all the parts to make this thing and ship them straight to javier he has access to a maker space in the island with people that can build these things and then go distribute them to people in need so that's just one tiny way to help the people of puerto rico i'm currently working in other projects this one for example this one is way bigger. This system it has less features than the other one, but it's bigger. This one can run almost an entire home. It's a 900 watts. It can run a full-size refrigerator, ceiling fans, televisions. I mean, you name it. And it's a whole lot easier to put together. It's already built. All you have to do is get the batteries, connect them in here, and it's ready to use. This will be the subject of my next video. So as always, thank you for watching my videos and, and thank you to all of those of you who will help me help the people of Puerto Rico. Stay tuned for the next few videos, which if everything works out, it will include me visiting the island. So once again, thank you for watching and if you haven't yet, please check out the motherboard piece done on me here. Till next time, bye. Utilities are a thing of the past. It's only a matter of time before they're not a use to society. Because everyone's gonna have their own ability to make their own power. And so it's gonna be communities where they have their batteries in their garage and they have their solar panels on the roof and they have their electric cars in their garage. And so they generate their own electricity.